Hello, I'm Judith Lowe and this is another video in our series Practice Your NLP to encourage you to further develop and learn and practice your NLP skills. And the pattern that I have for you today is from the NLP Meta Model and it's one that you have to know and should learn and really mustn't not practice and there's no such thing as can't and I think that gives you a bit of a clue about the one I'm thinking of. The video is in three sections. The first section is simply about identifying this pattern in someone's spoken or written language or in your own internal dialogue, for example, just spotting the pattern. The second um, part of the video is about asking the meta-model question, the purpose of which obviously is to expand and enrich someone's model of a situation such that they have better quality kinds of choices, they're going to be more effective and congruent. The third part of the video is to give you a four-step process taking somebody from the present state, problem state, through to a desired state and outcome orientation using this pattern and the questions from the meta model. So this is section one of our video which is about identifying the pattern. The pattern is called the modal operators in the NLP meta model and modal operator basically means it's like modus operandi, it's a mode of operating and it's a structure in language that comes before a verb and acts on the verb. And the first one is called the modal operator of necessity. And it's the pattern, you have to, we must, we need to. And it's negation, we mustn't, we oughtn't, you needn't, you shouldn't. And uh, you can feel that kind of pressure with it, you have to. The second one is called the modal operator of possibility, although really it's impossibility because it's that structure that goes, I can't, it's impossible. So you can hear with both of these patterns, these modal operator patterns, necessity, the have to's, the shouldn'ts, the impossibility, can'ts, impossible. You can hear this kind of constriction of choices going on. And often there's a feeling of pressure that goes with that, an uncomfortable feeling of uh, frustration or despair or uh, anxiety or something like that. They're often part of the structure of those kinds of experiences. And we're looking to work with changing a belief. Again, you can hear that it's a belief structure. It's like there's a rule inside the speaker's model of the world. It's like a boundary condition that they've set. You can start to hear as we go through that, the presuppositions, the judgments, the loss performatives, the cause effects, those always the universal uh, quantifiers inside of this pattern as well. This have to, you should, you must, I can't, it's impossible. It's like a claim is being made by the speaker about what is and isn't necessary and possible in the world. And of course, in their model of the world, this claim may or may not be accurate, valid or useful. And that of course is what we are going to help them explore. So this second section is about the questions, the meta-model questions. With the modal operator of necessity, the question in response to someone running this, I should, I have to, we must, is just purely to ask, so what would happen if you didn't? So I must do this, but what would happen if you didn't? It's an invitation to cross that boundary and actually speak out loud and link to this information about whatever potential consequence, even catastrophe, that is in their world, which is making it for them a have to and a must. So the idea of these questions is to, in the first instance, help the speaker go beyond the boundary that they've set and start to link relevant data and information into one whole sentence. It gives you that whole cause-effect structure out loud in one piece. So I have to, what would happen if you didn't? I mustn't, and what would happen if you did? So there's the invitation. With the modal operators of impossibility, I can't, it's 
very interesting question. Again, the question is an invitation to go beyond that perceived boundary in the speaker's model of the world, and this time use the as if move. What would it be like if you could? So I can't, I can't. What would it be like though, if you just pretended for a moment, if you just imagined for a moment that you actually could do this? What would that be like if you try that on in experience? It's like this move in imagination to start to activate and mobilize different kinds of information and experience in the person's system. Um, so, so this is going to really help. What would it be like if you could? The other question, of course, that you can ask with the I can't pattern is, so what's stopping you? What stops you? What's stopping you? And then you often get a series of reasons why it's because of this, this, and this. And then you can do the NLP move towards outcome orientation. So I can't, I can't, what's stopping you? The answer will be some form of problem or limitation. And then the follow-up question will be, so what do you want instead of that problem or limitation? But basically these questions are designed to help go beyond the boundary and to surface and link missing or new pieces of information for the speaker that they are not at the moment referencing. You're helping them expand and enrich their perception of this situation. So in part three, I want to give you some examples of this four-step coaching process. Uh, and the four steps are identify the pattern, ask the question, listen to the answer that you get, and then follow through with actually two of the other modal operators, which are the modal operator of desire, want to, you're going to find out what they want, and the modal operator of choice and choosing to bring them to a place where they are choosing potentially new possibilities and options. So I've actually written some examples of here. So the I should, I ought to. I should and I really ought to practice the metamodal patterns. So there's the, there's the thing. So here's my question. And what will happen if you don't? <laughs> Well, my skills will degrade. I won't be such an effective coach. I won't be able to help people with my NLP in the way that I really, really wanted to. Okay, so I'm just kind of listening. So then step four, outcome orientation. So what is it then that you want? What's your goal here? Well, I want to learn and refine my skills in the meta model so that the patterns become second nature. I can work successfully as a coach uh, using these kinds of tools. Excellent. So there we've gone. Pattern, question, answer, outcome. From uh, problem state to desired state. So here's the four steps for the impossibility one is I can't understand the meta model and all those awful labels. I have had this said to me. Uh, so gently and rapportfully. So, uh, but what would it be like if you could? If you just take a moment, think I understand. Pace, pace, pace. You don't understand the meta model. You don't like all the awful labels. What would it be like for you though, if you could understand them? You did, you could um, use these labels well. So, well, I'd be more fluent, I'd be more confident, I'd be more effective as a coach, I'd feel that my practice as an NLP practitioner was all heading in the right direction much more. That's really great. So that's their answer. And now to take them towards an outcome. So what is it that you want? The modal operator of desire now, replacing the modal operator of impossibility. Well, what I want, sorry, I've got this written down. I want to learn the labels. I want to focus on these patterns, maybe one by one. I might even put them on tape to play, who knows, so that I can confidently help people in my NLP practice.
there you go. Identify the pattern, ask the question, get the answer, take them towards an outcome and a place of choice. So I hope that's a really helpful reminder for you practitioners about uh, the modal operators in the NLP metamodel. It's a really fascinating pattern and it's the at the heart actually of a lot of quite profound sorts of difficulties that people and organizations in fact have and um, it's very very transformational when you use it as part of all of the different patterns working together in the meta model and as such I'm actually making an extended version especially for NLP coaches and NLP trainers who will want to work for these with these deeper kinds of layers that are involved in it for these bigger transformational changes for people um, but for now I hope that um, you've really enjoyed this and enjoy practicing your NLP.